Hi, I'm Hector Garcia. I'm an accountant, a QuickBooks consultant, and a small business advisor. And in almost all of my engagements with my clients, whether it's an explicit conversation or it's implicit, there is the concept of value, okay? The value that I will deliver. And in exchange, the client wants to pay a price that's under that value. However, value is an extremely subjective concept. And the best way to explain what that is, is explained by an uh, economic term called the paradox of value. So I'm going to play a video that's uh, a TED uh, Ed uh, video, and I'll put a link for credit below. And I'll kind of give you my comments about that. So let me go ahead and play the video. Imagine you're on a game show and you can choose between two prizes, a diamond or a bottle of water. It's an easy choice. The diamonds are clearly more valuable. Now imagine being given the same choice again, only this time you're not on a game show, but dehydrated in the desert after wandering for days. Do you choose differently? Why? Aren't diamonds still more valuable? This is the paradox of value, famously described by pioneering economist Adam Smith. And what it tells us is that defining value is not as simple as it seems. On the game show, you were thinking about each item's exchange value what you could obtain for them at a later time. But in an emergency like the desert scenario, what matters far more is their use value, how helpful they are in your current situation. And because we only get to choose one of the options, we also have to consider its opportunity cost, or what we lose by giving up the other choice. After all, it doesn't matter how much you could get from selling the diamond if you never make it out of the desert. Most modern economists deal with the paradox of value by attempting to unify these considerations under the concept of utility, how well something sa- Okay, let me pause that for a second. I will play the rest of the video and let me add some commentaries. So for most folks, uh, value, it's a number that they want to qual quantify in a, in, a, in a numerical currency fashion. Like we have to somehow take the concept of value in and put a dollar sign next to it. And what this video is trying to explain is that this is not, this has nothing to do with money. It has to do whether uh, that particular item that you're getting um, has a value that's deeper than, than money, uh, at least from a psychological perspective. You know, if, if you need water to survive, there's no dollar uh, amount that you can assign to that. Whereas, you know, a diamond, uh, which, probably the most valuable, uh, uh, scarce resource in the world, valuable in terms of currency, has no value in terms of helping you survive in the desert. So um, value is not only subjective, it's also extremely situational. And in business, this happens in the same way. You may have the exact same client, the exact same situation, and you may be trying to sell them a solution and depending on, on how their day went, how their last month went, uh, what their plans for the future are, um, past experiences for with other folks doing similar things, all of these factors, the environment, the weather, that can affect how people perceive the value of the product or the solution that you're offering. So the only purpose of this video is not necessarily to uh, just stay in this academic concept of value, it's to, it's, to, it's to make you see that value is not measurable per se. Um, we, we tend to measure everything in terms of dollars, but internally each individual has its own measuring stick that may not necessarily be currency. So let me play the, the other uh, part of the video here. Satisfies a person's wants or needs. Utility can apply to anything from the basic need for food to the pleasure of hearing a favorite song, and will naturally vary for different people and circumstances. A market economy provides us with an easy way to track utility. Put simply, the utility something has to you is reflected by how much you'd be willing to pay for it. Now imagine yourself back in the desert, only this time you get offered a new diamond or a fresh bottle of water every five minutes. If you're like most people, you'll first choose enough water to last the trip, and then as many diamonds as you can carry. This is because of something called marginal utility. And it means that when you choose between diamonds and water, you compare utility obtained from every additional bottle of water to every additional diamond. 
and you do this each time an offer is made. The first bottle of water is worth more to you than any amount of diamonds, but eventually you have all the water you need. After a while, every additional bottle becomes a burden. That's when you begin to choose diamonds over water. And it's not just necessities like water. When it comes to most things, the more of it you acquire, the less useful or enjoyable every additional bit becomes. This is the law of diminishing marginal utility. You might gladly buy two or three helpings of your favorite food, but the fourth would make you nauseated. And the hunt. Okay, so uh, going back to uh, the video earlier explained who uh, Adam Smith was. Adam Smith is an economist. I'm not sure if he's an economist. I'll take that away. I actually don't know enough about him to call him an economist. I don't know what the label to put. But he wrote a book called The Wealth of Nations, and he, he is uh, known and renowned as one of the, the fathers of, of modern capitalism. So in the, in the concept of paradox of value and in the concept of value in general, the underlying um, central theme is that we live in a capitalistic society and we use uh, pricing as, a, as the ultimate signal to understand what people want, okay? They, they didn't talk about supply and demand, but supply and demand is uh, sort of baked into the cake of this whole explanation. In other words, if you have a lot of something and you have plenty or extra, you probably don't want uh, more. So, um, so if there isn't a market with people that wanting more of that thing that everybody has, the price will essentially uh, start lowering in order to attract uh, people to buy it. And, and that's how the free market works. The free market um, allows every single person to uh, pay for a product and based on what they pay, that's a clear signal on what the demand is. And then, and then supply in some cases uh, will, will have an effect. Like if you have something that there isn't a lot of, like diamonds, maybe as a society we gave diamonds value because of its scarcity. But in the long run, diamonds really don't have any functional or utility value uh, for us individually, especially if we're in the desert. Now, you could argue that diamonds are indestructible and they're used in industrial and commercial applications because uh, they cut through uh, other uh, heavy, uh, hard elements and that sort of thing. That, that is possible. But, um, but the reason why this is called the paradox of value and the paradox is between water and diamond because we're, we're taking two things. The most abundant thing on earth, which is water, or maybe one of the most abundant. I don't know if, it's, if there's more oxygen than water, but you're taking the single most abundant thing on earth, which is water. And one of the least abundant things that we highly value and you're comparing with each other and, there's, and they're, in, in, they're in opposite poles of both supply and demand and price. But depending on the circumstance, uh, you may or may not want the other. This is why uh, demand is also very subjective. You cannot think of demand as an aggregate concept that everybody wants the same thing under every circumstance. Demand or what people want, uh, ergo what people value, what you're willing to give them or what you're providing, is going to be subjective, individual, and case by case. All right, so I'll play and finish the the rest of the video. And like I said, I'll, I'll put a, a link to the to the video so you can watch the whole thing uninterrupted. Hundredth would spoil before you could even get to it. Or you could pay to see the same movie over and over until you got bored of it or spent all of your money. Either way, you'd eventually reach a point where the marginal utility for buying another movie ticket became zero. Utility applies not just to buying things, but to all our decisions. And the intuitive way to maximize it and avoid diminishing returns is to vary the way we spend our time and resources. After our basic needs are met, we'd theoretically decide to invest in choices only to the point they're useful or enjoyable. Of course, how effectively any of us manage to maximize utility in real life is another matter. But it helps to remember that the ultimate source of value comes from us. The needs we share, the things we enjoy, and the choices we make. In my opinion, this is one of the best videos in the world of uh, YouTube. So um, I'll give full credit to the authors of this and, and the video is really well put together, very concise, it's only four minutes. Obviously my version of it with all this commentary is a lot longer, but I wanted to tell you why I love it so much and why I think it is relevant 
to anyone that sells professional services. Because a part of my journey has been getting off the mentality that people want to buy my time and nobody cares about my time. Uh, people only care about uh, the potential solution that's valuable to them. And the more and more I understand from a, both a macroeconomic concept and also in a micro psychology, uh, psychological concept with the individual that I'm dealing with. So I'm dealing with both things, the macroeconomic effects of the paradox of value and the micro micro psychoanalytical effect of the individual person that is buying from me. And if I merge both of those concepts together and I'm able to speak to the person um, about what are their needs and how they perceive what I can offer as valuable or not, I, I'm actually in a much better position to serve them uh, in, in the best of my abilities or identify that I cannot serve them and, and have them go in a different direction instead of wasting your time t- trying to price something that your client will never get value from. So that's really what I wanted to share with you and I would love to know what you think about this. Put some comments below. What do you think about the paradox of value? What do you think about my comments? Um, where are you in your journey to understanding uh, value and pricing in your professional services business? Thank you.